don't know whether to say good evening. Katsi demands I say a very good evening and welcome to News Extra. The news program that brings you the news with the extra touch. You know what the word corona means? No, no, no. I did not say coronavirus. I said corona. It's a Latin word meaning the crown. And you know who wears the crown? Well, uh, the coronavirus seems to be on the throne now and is ruling the world. Nigeria inclusive. So tonight we will dedicate a chunk of the program on coronavirus. It's seeing that from three infections, the number has jumped to eight in the country. But of course, it's not all about the virus. We have other stories that will gladden the heart from business to innovation, medicine and social angle stories, sports and much more. Okay, tonight is a loaded package. So let's not dwell on the teaser because the taste of the pudding is in the eating. I am Fatima Omar Buba and this is News Extra. We begin with facts. President Mohamed Buhari has approved a number of critical me measures towards sustaining the nation's economy in response to the negative impact of coronavirus pandemic on the global economic well-being. One of such measures is the reduction in the size of the approved 2020 budget by 1.5 trillion naira. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning Zainab Ahmed announced this while briefing journalists at the end of the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Muhammad Buhari. We'll bring you details later in the course of the bulletin. Now, President Muhammad Buhari has approved a reduction in pump price of petroleum from 145 naira per litre to 125 naira per litre. Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Timmy Prince Silva, announced first at a media briefing after the meeting of the Federal Executive Council. You are all aware that oil prices have drastically dropped and we know that this really will translate to a lot of sufferings on the part of Nigerians. Therefore the President has graciously approved that the pump price of petrol should also accordingly drop. So the pump price of petroleum uh, of petrol will be from now 125 for now. If there is any further drop, it will even drop further. We are introducing the a price modulation mechanism which will allow the price to drop or rise with the rise in crude oil prices so that our people will not just take the brunt of uh, this crude oil uh, price drop, but also get at least some benefits from it. The Minister of Interior, Rafu Raouf Aregbeshala, also gave an update on the travel ban and restrictions earlier issued by the federal government, which affected 13 countries that have more than 1,000 cases of COVID-19. We will no longer be taking whoever takes off from those nations, nor are we taking their citizens coming from anywhere for now. What this really means is that we are suspending issuance of visas. And we are cancelling all visas already issued to citizens or travelers from these nations. If you take effect from Saturday, and it will last for four weeks for sisters. for the time being, while developments will dictate what will happen thereafter. What is most important for us is to save millions of Nigerians, not just from their own jobs, from, from, from no, save their lives. And I think you put it on the balance, it's clear which option should be adopted. Of course it will be. It will bring some hardship, as it's bringing other parts of the world. But I think when you put it on the balance, the option is very clear. The interest of and the interest of Nigeria is paramount, is superior to any other, any other personal interest. 
and to talk more on the approved reduction in pump price of petroleum we have Omar Ajia he is the chief financial officer of the NNPC it's good to have you on this extra sir thank you madam well it is good news right absolutely good reduction. news for Nigerians okay for Nigerians now with this uh, new price regime how was how was it arrived at uh, as you may know, the crude oil is uh, the real raw material used uh, in driving the petrol, which is the petroleum motor spirit, PMS. Uh, the landing cost of this product to Nigeria has fallen, uh, a reflection of the falling uh, crude oil price itself. Uh, that price, uh, we have taken that as, as a figure and added a uh, reasonable logistics cost to bring in it in country uh, and then adding a reasonable margin to arrive at a figure of 125 for, okay. for X pound price uh, and we have directed all our retail stations to reflect this uh, price immediately tomorrow uh, but also because we are the single uh, importer of this product, we have also reduced the ex coastal price from 117 naira 60 kobo to 99 naira 44 kobo for those bulk marketers that are buy from us. Mm -hmm. And in addition, we have also reduced our ex depot price from 133 naira 28 kobo to 113 naira 28 kobo okay. for those IPMA members who buy from the depots. Okay. Even though you talked about you know, the implement implementation being immediate, you know, most times people take advantage advantage of uh, situations like this to, you know, hoard their products. What is NPC going to do about that? The key to this is that if you hold and the prices continue to drop, then you tend to uh, lose a lot of value. So it's better for a marketer to sell and go back to load the next consignment at a cheaper rate. Okay. Uh, the market forces will come in and if you hold, you might be injuring yourself. Okay. And on our part, we will uh, not allow any of our stations to sell uh, above that price for now. Okay, earlier this evening when people come into the office, I had some say that there's already panic buying all over. You know, some filling stations, you know, have queues. What will you say to people out there? I think I'm appealing to the marketers and Nigerians. There's no need to panic. We have over 2 billion liters uh, on land and in marine in Nigeria, which we have imported uh, prior to this uh, price crash. Okay. So we are actually taking a hit. Uh, in order for Nigerians to benefit from the falling oil prices. I think it's a reflection of uh, the people believing that uh, there will be a reduction. So there was that reluctance to say, I will not buy now until uh, uh, the, the prices uh, are known. Mm -hmm. So the prices are known now. So all those who are reluctant to go and buy from the depots will now begin to buy and bring to their stations. Oh, thank you so much, Umar Ajia, for coming thank on our News Extra. It's good to have you. All right. Uh, in another development, uh, the federal government has imposed travel ban on 13 countries, including the United States and United Kingdom, as part of further measures against the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Bas Mustafa, in a media briefing, said the Presidential Tax Force for the control of COVID-19 arrived at these measures after an assessment of the global situation. Nigeria is restricting entry into the country for travelers from the following 13 nations. China, Italy, Iran, South Korea, Spain, Japan, France, Germany, Norway, the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Netherlands, and Switzerland. These are all countries with over 1,000 cases domestically. All persons arriving in Nigeria who might have visited these countries 15 days prior to such arrival will be subjected to supervise self-isolation and testing for 14 days. The federal government is temporarily 
suspending the issuance of all visas on arrival. The federal government is also cancelling all Nigerians to cancel or postpone all non-essential travels to these countries. The federal government urges public health authorities of countries with high burden to conduct diligent departure screening of passengers and also in doses travel advisories to their nationals to postpone travels to Nigeria. These restrictions will come into effect from Saturday 21st of March 2020 and it will last for the following four weeks subject to review as the situation unfolds. In the meantime, the Federal Ministry of Health has confirmed five new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria within the last 36 hours, bringing the total number of confirmed cases in Nigeria to eight. Elizabeth Omori reports that the Minister of Health, Dr. Saige Haniri, disclosed this to journalists at an extraordinary media briefing to the containment of the disease in Abuja. Patients have continued to grapple with containing the spread of the coronavirus pandemic. From the first index case announced on the 28th of February 2020 in Nigeria, the country now has five confirmed additional cases of COVID-19. Of the five newly confirmed cases, three arrived from the United States, while two came in from the United Kingdom. Two of the three from the United States are Nigerians. A mother and her six weeks old baby, said to be so far the youngest COVID-19 patient. The third case is an American national who came in from the land border and becomes the first COVID-19 case from that point of entry. The two cases from the United Kingdom are also Nigerians. One of them is located in Ekiti and the other four are located in Lagos, but all of them are being followed up by the state public health officials and supported by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control. The Minister of Health explained that the government is conducting risk assessment to help guide decision-making to complement the efforts of the newly inaugurated Presidential Task Force for the Control of COVID-19. Dr. Ehaniri also revealed that Nigeria is not in a state of community transmission and as such citizens must remain calm. And when it be, we publish the names of people we are looking for if we cannot find them in order to be able to have uh, 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 the assurance that there is no gap. We also look at the airline that brought the, uh, the person if he came in by air and uh, inform the airline, inform the country, and if any of the, uh, any of the passengers have moved to another country, we send a message to them uh, through the uh, World Health Organization that these persons have been uh, in contact with a corona uh, patient. He advised travelers from the list of COVID-19 high burden countries to self-isolate for 14 days in a lot relevant health authorities. In Abuja, Elizabeth. Omori, NTA News. Now, a total of uh, six patients, including the index case, who tested positive to the coronavirus are being managed at the mainland hospital, Yaba. Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aki Abayomi, disclosed this to newsmen in Lagos. Hingana John Adams tells us more. The four new confirmed cases include a Nigerian mother and her six weeks old baby who arrived Nigeria from the U.S. on the 8th of March on board a Virgin Atlantic flight VS411. These new cases bring the number of cases admitted at the mainland hospital Yaba to seven, one of which has been discharged. We have an American citizen who crossed into Nigeria on the 13th of March through the Nigeria Bene land border. He also was tested yesterday and tested positive. We have a Nigerian male that returned from the UK on the 13th of March, also on Virgin Atlantic, flight number VS411. He was tested yesterday 
and his test was positive. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akin Abayomi, said the family members of the 30-year-old Nigerian female who were quarantined have been discharged after their results came out negative and the Indian who came via Cairo also tested negative. We still have the index case. We have the lady that traveled from the UK that was admitted the day before yesterday. And yesterday we have four new cases, which brings us to a total in the facility of six. Contact tracing of the four new cases is ongoing. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. Thank you, Hank and John Adams, for the update. And now back to our earlier report on the Federal Executive Council meeting. And our State House correspondent, Adam Musambo, has the details. President Muhammad Buhari's approval of the new economic measures followed the recommendations of the high-powered interministerial committee he earlier set up to assess the impact of COVID-19 on Nigeria's economy. Consequently, the president ordered the cutting down of a number of measures, including the size of the federally funded upstream projects of the petroleum sector, as government previews how to enhance revenues that are not directly affected by the decline in the price of crude oil. We are looking at enhancing uh, production to make sure that at the minimum the 1.8 million barrels per day that is in the budget as production volumes is realized and NMPC has directives to, to that effect that we also need to adjust customs revenue, which has been budgeted for at 1.5 trillion, uh, but we're adjusting it downwards because we anticipate that trade volumes will reduce. And w once trade volumes reduce, customs revenue will be significantly uh, impacted as a result. We also have approval to reduce the projected revenue from privatization process by as much as 50%. Because, again, of the slowdown in economic activities, we are anticipating that the sale of the independent power plants might not be fully realized as planned for in the budget. President Muhammad Buhari also approved that the capital expenditure in the 2020 budget be cut down by 20% across ministries, departments and agencies, as well as a 25% cut of all government-owned enterprises. By this measure, we expect that the operating surpluses that it will accrue to the Federation will increase significantly. Other policy matters that have been discussed for implementation is for the administration to stop recruitments except for essential services such as security and health, uh, uh, health services. We've been asked also to review the modalities for the implementation of the social investment program and finally to review the non-essential tax waivers that we are implementing right now to cut down on our tax expenditure so that we can realize more revenue. For the new measures to take effect, the minister, however, said the executive plans to engage the National Assembly as soon as possible to revise both the medium-term expenditure framework and the 2020 budget. Meanwhile, the council approved a revised estimated cost for the completion of the inland river port in Lokoja, Kogi State. The revised sum was um, now 6.4 billion um, naira an increase by two billion. During the council meeting, the Minister of Aviation, Hadi Sirika, and his water resources counterpart, Suleiman Adamu, gave account of their accomplishments so far in line with the mandate areas approved for their ministries. By 2021, quarter three, we would have the uh, national career established and the planes will be flying domestically, and thereafter to certify all of the requirements for EASA and so on, and we'll begin international. We have prioritized our projects. Uh, we inherited 116 projects. So far, uh, probably about 20 or so of these projects have been completed between irrigation, dams, uh, and water supply. The Minister of Health, Dr. Osagie Ihanere, who gave an update on efforts at containing COVID-19 in Nigeria, re-emphasized the need for social distancing, saying, however, that government is yet to formally ban large gatherings across Nigeria. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News.
Thank you so much, Adam. So before that, now the Senate has called on President Muhammad Buhari to address the nation on the dreaded COVID-19 in the country and to set up a special intervention fund for tackling the scourge. Uh, this followed a motion by Senator Anjuma Woje, which also urged the federal government to urgently establish testing centers in all the states of the Federation. The Senate also advised federal government to shut down all airports in the country, except Namdi Azikri International Airport Abuja and Murtala Mohammed International Airport Lagos for easy monitoring while all Nigerians coming into the country from high risk countries will be quarantined by government against the initial self quarantine. Our pastor himself, and address this issue, I yes. think Nigerians and citizens, Nigeria, Nigerians will take this matter more seriously. And some people also have sweaty palms. So it's not being uh, too overly careful, but this is the time for us to make sure we take our hygiene seriously. And that is why if countries that have the capability to, to contain these epidemi uh, epidemics or pandemics are taking very drastic measures, I believe that they have to take more drastic measures. The key access that are required for us is for us, one, to get more resources to be able to do more testing. We observed that in the entire southeast there is none, no testing center, in the entire north there is no testing center, and that is dangerous. Senate also can vast tighter border control and for governments at all levels and to immediately embark on sensitization. In the meantime, as the corona pandemic has left leaders on the edge of their seats, as they give directions to the public to combat the disease. The House of Representatives Wednesday passed wide-ranging resolutions towards preventing the spread of the disease in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports. It is a matter of urgent public importance putting the pandemic into perspective, which is tasking policymakers to come up with watertight measures as it takes its toll on health social and economic activities. Countries within the South West African region, as of today, about three or five, have established quarantine. As you get into the country, you are not even just allowed to move. You, you, they take you to quarantine areas. Quarantine areas and hospitals should be equipped and put in place and personnel should be, treat, uh, should be trained. To put machinery in motion, to ensure adequate medical checks at all the international airports, and land borders in Nigeria and to ensure adequate supply of medical gadgets. The federal government to introduce emergency protocols in case there is need to shut down business premises. House members urge authorities to ban open worships as was done in the Vatican and Saudi Arabia, restrict all inbound flights to Lagos and Abuja airports only and place officials at land and sea borders on red alerts. National Assembly to urgently test all members of Senate, House of Reps, civil servants, and all our legislative aides. The House should restrict receiving visitors apart from honorable members and their aides. Because of the severity, as we are sitting here, there have been several breaking news, and I can announce it. So time is of the essence. Delay can be dangerous, and if we make the wrong decision, whatever decision we make today does not foreclose any other decision in future. Nigeria, the lawmakers added, should enter agreements with other countries for the production and supply of COVID-19 test kits and requested a weekly briefing by the Minister of Health to the House leadership on the disease from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. In another development, governors of the Northwest Geopolitical Zone have resolved to shut down schools for the period of one month to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Mohamed Umar Ajingi reports that the governors also agreed to jointly support security operations in the region to tackle banditry, communal clashes and other forms of criminality. It was an emergency meeting that lasted for more than an hour behind closed doors with the governors of the Northwest states, Kano, 
Kesina, Sokoto, Kepi, Zamfara, Jigawa, and the host Kaduna State. Their Niger State counterpart Abakar Sani Bello attended the meeting presided over by the foreign chairman Aminu Bello Masari of Kasina State. They resolved to further clamp down on all threats to security and take definite measures to curb the coronavirus pandemic. These include school closures. Measures shall be taken by each of the states in consultation with the national examination bodies to close schools for a period of 30 days starting from Monday, 23rd March. The governors resolved to step up sensitization on the coronavirus, urging the people to immediately report any suspected case to appropriate authorities. The governors have also resolved to embark on aggressive campaigns to encourage citizens to uphold personal hygiene, including hand washing and environmental sanitation. From the government house Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umarajingi. NTA News. I believe that's a necessary step to take. Good one. Less than 24 hours to the federal government suspended the National Sports Festival as a result of the outbreak of coronavirus. The National Youth Service Corps, NYC, has also suspended its ongoing orientation exercise, the 2020 Batch A Stream 1 exercise nationwide. I can't say if the Corps members are happy or disappointed. While well, Olainka Ojo visited the FCT NYC orientation camp in Kubo to ascertain the level of compliance from different institutions fields of study gender and ethnicity these young nigerians came with the belief that they'll be spending the usual three weeks allotted for the orientation course before being posted to their places of primary assignment on the wake of dawn the core members received the news of the suspension of their exercise after eight days of being on camp with 13 days to go as a result of COVID-19. They are safety first. Because as I do tell the core members, their parents and the federal government and government I told them have invested so much on, their, on them and they want the return of their investments because as future leaders we cannot talk with their future and that informed why this decision was taken. It's for our safety because we are meant to believe that safety comes first no matter what. The, the move that the government does take now, it is right for them to leave us to leave the camp. I don't think it's fair because we have been exposed to the coronavirus. When we leave this camp and go to our various homes, we don't know who we will meet on the way. The youth corps members nationwide have since been posted to their places of primary assignment and advised to report as their one-year call to national service began eight days ago. Olainka Ujo. NTA News. Now, Alenka, I like the response of that copper uh, when she said safety comes first. Sure, safety comes first. Now, it is spreading like wildfire across the globe, sending shivers down the spine of many, forcing mankind to redefine so many roles. When News Extra returns, we bring you stories on how key players are bracing to the challenge of ensuring that COVID-19 does not make Nigeria a safe heaven. Stay with us. Good to have you back on News Extra. Kano State Government is taking additional measure towards curtailing the spread of COVID-19 into the northern Nigeria's commercial hub. In addition to the emergency preparedness and response, the State Ministries of Health and Information will work together with relevant stakeholders in creating awareness on preventive measures. This came to a light during a joint news conference hosted by commissioners of the two ministries. Hadiza Mohammed has the details. Since the global outbreak of COVID-19, the federal government has taken proactive measures at strategic entry points to prevent the importation of the virus into Nigeria. The Imala Amina Kano International Airport is among such places. On its part, Kano State Government also put in place emergency response measures to curtail the spread of the disease. In addition, the State Ministry of Health is collaborating with that of information on preventive measures. People who became infected with COVID-19 may experience only mild illness and recover easily, but could be more severe in, other, in others, particularly elderly uh, persons and people with underlying uh, chronic illnesses. I had discussion with the commissioner in charge of uh, Ministry of Education and I was told that 
through, I think, was in collaboration with the Ministry of Health, they had meetings with all the principals of secondary schools, especially boarding schools, so that they will sensitize them on efforts to be made, and, and I think that is very good. The Enlightenment campaign is mostly centered on improved personal hygiene and reporting suspected cases to concerned authorities. From Kano, Hadiza Muhammad, NTA News. Thank you so much, Hadiza. The Enugu State University Teaching Hospital is said to be the isolation center for patients with suspected cases of coronavirus and other infectious diseases was locked out on NTA News crew who visited the center to know the state of the facility. The visit is also coming on the heels of a letter which has gone viral on the social media reportedly written by the daughter of the woman suspected of the coronavirus disease whose results tested negative but who was said to have died due to a negligence and inhuman treatment meted out on her by the health workers in the hospital and Chinenye Umoye now reports. This is the Esut Colliery Hospital, said to be the isolation center in Enugu, where patients with suspected cases of coronavirus and other infectious diseases had to be isolated and quarantined. When NTA News crew visited the said isolation facility, they were denied access into the center, and efforts made to get the officials of the hospital to speak did not yield positive results. However, it was gathered from the letter making the rounds in the social media, purportedly written by the daughter of the woman suspected of the COVID-19 in Enugu, that upon her return to Nigeria from her visit to UK on Wednesday 11th of March 2020, she exhibited some symptoms of the coronavirus and was taken to the hospital on the 13th of March, while her blood samples were collected on Saturday 14th and proved negative on the 15th of March. The good news is that the sample came back from the rural specialist hospital at the late hours of Sunday, and uh, as it were, the result turned out to be negative. So the state at large, the emergency operations center, the Ministry of Health and the government of Enugu State are very, very happy with that development. But again, it has set the pace, at least to test the preparedness of the state, which we've seen that is very, very, very optimal. Even though the blood sample tested negative to COVID-19, the woman was said to have died, having been isolated in a dilapidated environment that seems to have been left uninhabitable over a long period of time. When NTN News crew put a call across to the Enugu State Commissioner for Information, as well as the Permanent Secretary, State Ministry of Health, they said the state government has summoned the management of the hospital to find out what actually happened and would brief the press on the outcome of the meeting. Also in the letter, the daughter of the said woman is asking why the Enugu state government had to wait until the news of the suspected case of the woman with COVID-19 before responding by releasing 20 million naira for the management of the state's isolation center. The new strand of coronavirus was detected back in December 2019 and the state government had before now assured residents of Enugu that it has an isolation center that is optimally ready to deal with any case of coronavirus and other emergencies. They've uh, activated their own, you know, emergency operations center. The state government encouraged the residents to ensure the highest level of personal hygiene, especially the hand and respiratory hygiene. In Enugu, Chine Enwoye, NTN News. Well, from Enugu, we'll bring you back to Abuja, where the Central Bank of Nigeria has further ramped up its support to the economy as the effects of the novel coronavirus continues to affect all aspects of life around the globe. Speaking in Abuja this Wednesday, Governor of the CBN, Godwin Mephile, say the additional 100 billion naira is to aid health authorities develop instant solution and prepare for any major crisis ahead now let's join lia katung babatindi for the rest of the story Earlier this week, a governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, announced a 50 billion naira fund to enable small businesses weather the storm as coronavirus continues to hit hard on economies around the world. Now, another 100 billion naira has just been added to that fund, even as global oil prices fall to the region of half of the nation's 2020 budget benchmark. As of today, crude price attained unfortunately a level of $25 per barrel. 
First, the CBN is directing all deposit money banks to increase their support to the pharmaceutical and healthcare industries. This support is intended to go to local drug manufacturing, increased bed count in hospitals, funding intensive care as well as training laboratory testing, equipment and research. Secondly, given the continuing impact of the disease on global supply chains, the Central Bank of Nigeria will increase its intervention in boosting local manufacturing and import substitution by another one trillion naira across all critical sectors of the Nigerian economy. Thirdly, an implementation committee that will action the private sector contribution of 1.5 trillion naira infrastructure funding that will link farming communities to markets as agreed at the Going for Growth Around Table last week will be set up. In addition to observing global markets, Mr. Emefele says the Apex Bank will continue to monitor developments on the COVID-19 infection and design appropriate monetary response to protect the people and economy of Nigeria. In Abuja, Baba today, NTA News. A very amazing development there, Marcelia. Now, ahead of series of activities to be hosted in the nation's capital, the Nigeria Diaspora Commission is soliciting the involvement of the FCT administration towards ensuring hitch free and beneficial event. Chairman of the Commission, Abike Dabir Erewa, revealed this when she led a delegation on a courtesy visit to the FCT minister. And Shaibu Onoze Yakubo tells us more. A lineup event scheduled to hold within the year in the nation's capital city by the Nigerian Diaspora Commission include National Diaspora Day on July 25, Diaspora Night, which will be first of its kind in the country, and Day of Return, as well as Nigerian Diaspora Investment Summit. Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri Erewa, says Nigerians in diaspora are willing to invest in the country if enabling environment is provided. Remitting $25, $26 billion per annum is not a joke. And they intend to do a lot more. And Honorable Minister, with what is happening all over the world now, even, you know, including the crash of the uh, oil price and everything, we need our diaspora. And they are willing and able, and some of them are coming in April to build a world-class medical center of excellence. FCT Minister Mohammed Musa Bello commended the CEO of the commission for her role on diaspora matters as a legislator and promised to support the commission in all its activities. As a matter of fact, we have earmarked uh, a sizable area where we are now in the process of determining who and who would be there. And it's basically supposed to be a medical center of excellence. Nigerian Diaspora Commission was established in May 2019 as a foreign policy instrument. Shuaibu Onoze Yakubu, NTA News. Now, find out why Niger State is a no-go area for street begging. That will be when we come back from this break we are about to take. Please stay tuned. Thank you so much for staying. The Nigerian Air Force in a special operation conducted with the Nigeria Police Force and other security agencies has smoked up out armed bandits from their camps at Walawa, Yadi and Kuduru Hills areas of Kaduna State. A statement by enough Director of Public Relations and Information, Air Commando, Ibikuleta Ramala, the joint air and ground operation was executed on 17 March 2020 after credible intelligence report and days of surveillance missions revealed that the bandits, after unsettling the original inhabitants of the area, had continued to operate from the locations with impunity. Subsequently, the NAF detailed its attack aircrafts to conduct a series of air raids on the bandits camp resulting in the destruction of some of the logistics facilities and structures housing the armed bandits, as well as the neutralization of several of them. The airstrikes also paved way for ground forces to conduct mop-up operations supported by NAF combat helicopters. No fewer than five commanders of Ansaru and a dozen armed bandits were neutralized in the operation.
In the meantime, it's been weeks of painstaking meetings and consultations by the ad hoc committee set up by the Senate to look into the challenges of Nigeria's national security. The committee, having concluded its assignment, made some recommendations, including the reorganization of the Nigerian police force by decentralizing its operational command centers to zones. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Simpo reports. Wednesday's entrance procession was devoid of the usual handshake by senators, a precautionary measure against COVID-19, but that did not deter the legislators from the day's legislative agenda. The issue of national security was the first item scheduled for consideration, and it was the report of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee the on the need to restructure and reorganize Nigeria's security architecture. Review of all laws guiding security agencies, joint operation in identifying hideouts of terrorists and kidnappers, and the acquisition of drones by the Nigerian Army were among the committee's recommendations. There should be a general mobilization of the entire national security apparatus with all the three we have necessary force multipliers available, including the involvement of local communities, communities against Boko Haram. The review of the revenue allocation formula, this will empower states and local governments to fund uh, security. All these criminals along the roads, Kaduna, you know, uh, Abuja, Lokoja, Okini, use drones, get them. Villages and Wattheads had specific roles in monitoring the arrivals and settlements of allies. Drones alone and technology cannot do this. The committee was of the view that the establishment of a national defense fund, state security council and enhancement of the welfare of security officers is key to addressing Nigeria's security challenge. Many people had suggested that there is general lack lackadaisical attitude on the part of the men of the force because they feel that what is provided has not been able to trickle down to those of them at the local level. I suggest you propose to the executive from the president and whoever he wants to involve a proper sitting to understand item by item on this recommendation. Uh, we are going to take personal visits uh, to Mr. President uh, with a view to ensuring that we remain on the same uh, platform, that this thing requires that we all work together. The other committee inaugurated on the 4th of February this year also harped on the need to fully utilize communication technology in tackling insecurity and an, an absence of a central database for criminals in Nigeria as a big challenge to national security. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. The Nigerian Television Authority is embracing modern digital broadcasting opportunities for efficient transmission techniques to improve its mandate of protecting national interest. This is part of the response by the Director General of the NTA, Yakubu Ibu Mohammed, when he received the House Committee on Information, National Orientation, Ethics and Values on an oversight visit to the NTA. National Assembly Correspondent Abdullah Aminu reports. Nigerian Television Authority was established in 1977 with the fusion of the first generation television stations across the country into one organization. Most of the projects contained in its 2019 Appropriation Act focused on digital transformation of its operation and transmission processes, which are currently in process. In his submission on the budget performance, the Director General of the NTA, Akubi Ibn Mohammed, told the House Committee that despite lack of funding in the budget, the digitization process remains its target in line with the global standard in television broadcasting, procurement of the state-of-art broadcasting facilities, and provision of modern studios in the ongoing construction of its permanent headquarters building are among the projects contained in the budget as specified by the budget office. NTA is said to be partially commercialized, but the conditions necessary for the success of the partial commercialization have to date not been made from 1992 
to date. So that's another hindrance. Are we commercialized? Are we partially commercialized? We are still paid what the normal civil servant is paid. That has not been attended to. Our equipment have not been, our stations have, have not been re-equipped. Our debts have not been uh, cleared. The talk of grant has not been given. Observations were made on the free service and on recovered debts to the NTA required money for completion of the headquarters building and the possibility to utilize an internally generated revenue to overcome some identified challenges. The challenges of the NTA is a national challenge that everybody must come together to solve. And it is right time we do something now. Submission by the executive director of the National Film and Video Censors Board, Adedayo Thomas, contained releases of about 127 million naira out of the 227 million naira capital appropriation. The committee chairman, Olishegun Odebumi, and other members advised the agency to ensure that the potentials of the music industry are fully explored for national development. They also assured the organization of legislative support in the regulation of uncensored and unclassified works in the country. The committee also requested the internally generated revenue structure of the board with a view to analyze the act establishing the board for possible legislative intervention. In Abuja, Abdullahi Haminu, NTA News. Thank you, Abdullahi. The Abule Adun Soba explosion is a tale of woe many will never forget, particularly those whose future hang in a balance. No thanks to the disaster that has robbed them of their loved ones, property and means of livelihood. Jennifer Igwe reports that to ease their burden, the Minister for Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Omar Farouk, reiterated federal government's commitment to supporting the Lagos state government in giving residents succor. An entire neighborhood reduced to rubbles, with debris of shattered buildings all around. Telltale signs and aftermath of a catastrophe that has claimed lives, left many injured, homeless, and skinned. My own self is triple tra tragedy. Upon all this problem, I rushed out and nobody agreed to take me to hospital. I managed somebody, a good servant that took me and my son to hospital. Before there, they have already, they, they, the tragedy even struck my car, damaged everything in my car. The people came and vandalized my things. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, who was shocked at the level of devastation, stressed federal government's determination to work with the Lagos state government to investigate the cause of the explosion, including treatment, rehabilitation of victims, and reconstruction of destroyed property. And we're going to support them, and we're going to assist them, we're going to bring uh, relief items in terms of food and non-food. That is the first stage before we now start thinking of how we can support these people to rebuild back their lives. We must make sure that the family are comfortable before we release statistics or anything like that. So that process is still ongoing. When every member of the family that is affected has full details, then we will come out to the price. It's the only thing that we can do, at least it's the minimum. Before the disaster, there were vibrant estates and businesses all around this area. Now most of the buildings are deserted, except for carpenters who are trying to salvage what they can of expensive building materials. We also have excavators from the state agencies pulling down structures that are unsafe. Where I am standing used to be a school. Now it is just a wreckage, an open space full of rubbles, a shadow of its old self. In Lagos, Jennifer Igwe, NTA News. It was sure an unfortunate incident there.
in a bid to combat insecurity and curb every factor likely to be a ready tool for crime, the Niger State government recently announced a total and immediate ban on all forms of street begging across the state. Two weeks after the announcement, it is still business as usual in various areas of the state capital. Dr. Mohammed reports that lack of machinery for enforcement of the ban is a major factor encouraging the practice. The act of begging as a form of sourcing for one's livelihood is evident in most capital cities around the country, Niger State inclusive. The act of begging, however, I mean, has taken different dimensions, causing security risks to the state. Despite the total ban on all forms of street begging announced by the Niger State government, here at the Kure Ultra Modern Market, Mina, the epicenter of business activities in the state capital, beggars can still be seen going about their daily businesses oblivious of the so-called ban, probably because there is no form of enforcement in place yet. Everyone that is a beggar should stop begging. We have uh, uh, centers for uh, skill acquisition centers where people can go and learn hard work. I'm a beggar and appealing to the government to forgive us and allow us to continue begging for our sustenance. If they can get me something doing, I will stop begging. I am married with two children. I would prefer to do business than to beg, but I have no capital. They should help us and leave us to beg because we don't have anything. This is not the first time street begging is being banned by the Niger State government. It could be recalled that in 2014, the then administration of Dr. Mohamed Babangida Ali had announced a ban on street begging and even repatriated some of the beggars to their states of origin. In Mina, Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. Welcome back. The federal government is putting in place a seamless collection instrument to drive the easy and prompt remittance of stamp duty on loans and all credit facilities. This was announced by the chairman, Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mohamed Nami, during an interactive meeting in Lagos with bank executives on compliance and integration of the physical policy. Awal Yusuf Jubo reports. stamp duty, collect and remit to the federal government. With the introduction of the Finance Act of 2019, this very important role by banks in the implementation and execution of the policy was re-emphasized at this conference. This meeting, therefore, is to engage relevant stakeholders in the adoption and enrollment in the automated stamp duty process and compliance. Chairman FIRS Mohamed Nami says failure to comply is far more primitive. At what stage do you remit is the issue. We have employed them to remit. As the stamp duty are collected around the government, we at Joint Task Board will look at all the issues, reconcile them, and now say this belongs to you or that belongs to me. You should also be aware that we have a GIFMIS at federal, at federal government level. The states are coming up their own called CIFMIS. So we are going to marry this platform together, integrate them, so that as these funds are coming in through the stamp duty platform, the respective owners get their money. Banks are required to pay stamp duty on loans and all credit facilities listed on the stamp duty portal. There's going to be an API that will make the process seamless. So in doing that, uh, banks, we are going to enroll by the time we enroll in that. So that makes the, the collection engine seamless for us to do. The FIRS board reiterated the commitment of the management to delivering quality service and make transactions the pivot for national development. In Lagos, Awal Yusuf Jibo, NTA News. From Lagos now, we'll take you to Adwekiti, where the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, has expressed readiness of the Air Force to work closely with the Kiti State Government to ensure successful takeoff of the Kagu Airport in Adwekiti, as it will also serve as a training ground for operatives and enhancing economic growth. Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar disclosed this at a meeting with Governor Kaede Fayemi at the government house at Kola Kola Adebobui has the details. 
3.4 kilometer cargo airport project was initiated by the state government to enhance exportation of agro allied products and motivate farmers for economic growth. The visit of the Chief of Air Staff is however imperative to concretize on areas of possible collaboration in conducting operations for the Nigerian Air Force at the conclusion of the airport project. Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar said the Nigerian Air Force has established not less than 13 Air Force bases across the country in recent time, including the one in Ikwetu Ijesha, Oshun State, for the Southwest, in supporting other sister security agencies to combat security challenges in the country. He reiterated the first readiness to be part of the success story of the Kagu Airport in the state for economic prosperity. The whole idea is to see how can we support the arrangement in the southwest. Uh, the whole thing, like I said, that, uh, Mr. President is so passionate about the issue of security. Governor Kadifaye may observed that the desire to promote agricultural productivity and build a mass city to turn the state to knowledge zone economy and make it a hub for medical tourism necessitated the decision for the airport project. It's not just useful for EGT. It's not just a trigger for our local economy, but also for utilizing what we have in terms of medical uh, and biomedical activities. The governor later took the chief of air staff on an area survey of the project site in Adwegiti, Kodla, Adibabuyi, NT News. Okay. Uh, Katsuna State Ministry of Health has completed arrangements to move the suspected COVID-19 patients currently in self-isolation at Dutsema to a facility at Federal Medical Center Katsuna pending the outcome of the analysis of his samples from Abuja. Shehu Adams reports. The suspected COVID-19 patient who is a PhD student in Malaysia and an indigenous of Katsuna State arrived the country on the 9th of this month through Malo Amini Kanui International Airport and proceeded to Dutama, his hometown. The permanent secretary, Dr. Kabiru Mustafa, explained that few days after his arrival, the suspected patient reported to a facility at Dutama complaining of diarrhea and fever. And considering the current global health challenge of COVID-19, the patient whose identity is hidden for privacy informed health personnel at the Dutama facility about his troubling history, which led to the suspicion. He developed some symptoms, though not too typical, I would say, of COVID. He didn't have high temperature. He didn't have cutter. He only had a diarrheal uh, disease, which he presented with. And he has been uh, on self-isolation since his return. Uh, Dr. Kabir Mustafa, who alleged any fear, said the suspected COVID-19 patient would be moved to a facility at the Federal Medical Center, Casina. Executive Secretary of the Kassana State Primary Healthcare Development Agency, Dr. Shamsuddin Yahya said, preliminary investigation revealed that the temperature of the suspected patient stood at 36.8 degrees, which according to him is within the normal range for adults. We have uh, been uh, meeting with uh, other stakeholders to make sure that, you know, we do whatever is necessary based on the guideline of uh, WHO. And of course we have been... Uh, talking with Nigeria Center for Disease Control, who provide the overall uh, you know, technical guideline on what to do. Dr. Shamsuddin Yahya therefore emphasized the need for personal and environmental hygiene to guard against the spread of COVID-19. In Kasana, Shehu Adamu. Thank you so much, uh, Shehu Adamu, for that update. Now, food is the most, or will I say, next most important thing to man, maybe after oxygen and water. And this is why political sentiments count less when it comes to the issue of food. Consequently, Bochi state government has put aside its political affiliation to work with government at the center to improve food production and supply in the state. Now let's join Musa Babalu for details of this collaboration. There is this popular saying that if one person cooks for a group of people, they all eat the food. But if a group cooks for one person, he cannot eat all the food. And given reference to food at the center, is at the same time talking about this building. Uh, this is where the office of the Minister of Agriculture is located. Officials of the Bauchi state government are in the building for discussions with the Minister Muhammad Sabananunu. 
The mission of the state governor is to seek the minister's approval for his state to key into the agricultural processing program of the federal government. We want agriculture to be an enabler where we create a lot of uh, goodwill, a lot of resources through the value chain in terms of employment, mopping up the unemployed youth, graduate youth, graduate women. And we discovered this policy that I read of the shelf has a lot to do with gender equity. I know about you very well. Mohamed Sabananono promised to look into the governor's request and also intimated him on other federal government programs that his states can benefit from. An internal project that also we will try to push to Bochi, that is milk processing plant. There are some international companies that are interested in, in, in milk processing. Yes. If that is the case, then I think we link them up with that one that has been yeah. earmarked for mm -hmm. that purpose. Okay. Yes. <laughs> As the governor stepped out of the minister's office, he says his visit was fruitful and his state is ready to work towards improving the socioeconomic well-being of farmers in Bochi State. From Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Good news for farmers there from Bauchi. Now, some people till the land and grow it. Others find peace of mind eating it. But it is a commodity that seals the fate of many. Collar nuts has play, played many roles in societies across Africa. And that's why Abdullahi Mohammed and this report examines its many parts. Collar nuts, nurtured in the west, revered in the east, and a choice delicacy among the people of northern Nigeria. At the top of the list of items during traditional or wedding fatiha, the collar nuts exchange hands. So it is at cherished festivals. The native collar nuts is used for prayers. Those who found solace in eating it in the last four to five decades, like Lowell and Abubakar, it has become an addiction. If I don't eat it, I end up in tears and yawning. Its effect on the teeth is immeasurable, and even the toothless have improvised a means to savor its flavor. <laughs> The indigenous species comes fresh, but the most sought after is preserved for a year or less and could have scaled through borders to the markets in Nigeria. They used to bring it from Ghana to Kasombachi. We go there Okano, Okao, we go there and buy it. Trading the precious caffeine loaded fruit involves the micro, small and mighty investors. And at the end of the chain is a colonel hawker. Just like one of each species, which has so many parts, so the story of color nuts, and also those involved in trading it, like Malalol Minister. Very good. His typical color nut hawking day begins in the early hours. He walks miles across the city center with a tray held above the shoulders, displaying his wares. And in what you may pass for a trade that cannot take its trader home, Lowell Minister's daily turnover remains one of the miracles of the colonel. I buy and sell at least 15 to 20,000 naira per day. The annals of history also have a special place for the precious commodity. The well, colonel trade started more than five centuries ago, that is over 500 years from the middle of the 16th century. The field of medicine has some reservations in its excessive consumption. That notwithstanding, the color note remains a favorite chew for many like Lowell and Abubakar who found themselves in the chains of its flavor. In Kaduna, Abdullah Muhammad, NT News. It is also a favorite for my grandmother, I tell you. Now, in the next segment of the news from Pence up to hands up. NSCDC parades jump imposters in Ibadan. Plus, Nigeria scientists attempt to cross the valley of death between the town and the gown at this year's Science Expo. Please stay. You're welcome. Impersonation is one act that many people believe is practically impossible, especially with the way technology has improved. 
In spite of this, some people still have an impression that they can beat both human and technological advancement. Correspondent Rafiat Anima Shaun Badmos captured two persons arrested and paraded by NSCDC for alleged examination of practice during the ongoing joint admission and matriculation board examination in Ibadan. So far, the conduct of 2020 examination has been going on smoothly in some of the centers visited. Examiners and candidates conducted themselves in line with the guidelines stipulated by CHAMP at ensuring the success of the examination. The system was okay, like everything, because some didn't have mouse. The system is very good, as in the exam is so simple. There was no problem with the systems, and everything went on smoothly. Meanwhile, it was a bitter experience for some boys paraded by men of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, or your state command, arrested for impersonation, which is part of examination malpractices. He was able to gain entrance to the exam hall. So in the process, he stood up and called his uh, impersonator to come in and assist him for the exam. The Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, in partnership with the uh, JAMP, have uh, decided to sanitize the system. I was inside the exam hall, so I sat down for the exam. So later, this is going to come and come in that I should come out from the exam. That the man that followed him that, that he said he wants to help me do the exam. And I said, no, that I'm the only one that wanted to do it. Then he said, I should go in. Well, I came with this guy to, in order to help him. So when we go to the security post, we asked them, that is it possible? Is it? So they told us it's not possible. That is only the person who registered that can do the exam. So the Minister of Education, Adamu Adamu, says the government is aware of corrupt practices during jam examination. He, however, urged candidates to desist from such practices as whoever is caught will face the rules of the law in Ibadan. Rofia and Imashan Badness, NTNews. President Muhammad Buhari, in the course of his second term in office, set out an agenda when he made a policy statement of setting in motion packages to leave, lift at least 100 million Nigerians out of extreme poverty over the next 10 years. This move, experts say, will not be possible without the involvement and application of science and technology. Now, with the ongoing science and technology and innovation expo in perspective, we ask, are Nigerians ready to answer the clarion call of Mr. President? Well, let's have a feel of the 2020 Expo as Justin Bemwe takes us through. The 2020 Science, Technology and Innovation Expo has been an avenue to expose the inventiveness and innovativeness of Nigerians that of course comes with that ingenuity of creativity. The development here shows the technological prowess of Nigerian scientists towards providing solutions to problems peculiar to Nigeria. One of such problem solvers is, is this inventor, engineer Abel Ojinta from the Akanubian Federal Polytechnic Uwana Ebony State. He and his team have identified a problem in the oil and gas industry and they have now made a move to solve that problem. Engineer Ojinta, let's hear from you. What about your invention? Thank you very much. This is automatic leakage, a pipeline leakage uh, detector. This is a detector that identifies any leakage in between a certain distance and gives a live call to installed numbers along the line. This is an expo that has brought together on a sport researchers, inventors, innovators, investors and entrepreneurs. The convergence is to help in the commercialization process for job and wealth creation to reduce poverty. Here, ideas from universities and polytechnics, research results from institutes and industrial laboratories, including those from the informal sector, are put forward for conversion into products found in the markets. Around the stands for exhibitions, you find on display locally constructed coconut oil extracting machine, indirect heat grill, solar power trainer, solar cooker, e-voting machine, scientific equipment for learning and agricultural products processing machines among an array of thousands of inventions. The interesting thing about this exhibition is that it has demonstrated that Nigeria is ready. And readiness of Nigeria is they have answered to the clarion call of Mr. President. They have brought up all these outputs. The next level 
as dictated again by Mr. President. One of the research institutes here, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, has brought to the table innovations of total solar unit solution and electric smart meter, among others. What we are celebrating now is the smart meter with new features that imported meters doesn't have. And these features will allow you to use your mobile handset to control your energy consumption. You can be anywhere and off your uh, power at home and select what uh, appliances should be on, what should be off. So far, this expo has started yielding results as the researchers have confirmed several investors now indicating interests in various research results. In Abuja, Justin Bemungi. NTA News. Thank you, Justin. Now it's time for us to have a feel of sport.